My name is Eugenia Abu, as you heard, and today I'm going to be talking about the many knots of success. The many knots of success. Many of the speakers before me have spoken about what success should look like, what success should be like, what you define success as. But this rope I'm carrying can either secure you or it can hang you. And so it's what you make the knot to be that it will become. But I would like to start with the many knots which we have when we wish to succeed and the many obstacles that tie us back like knots. As you know, success can be defined in many ways. But my definition of success is really about not just the luxury items you have, not just the things that you possess, but it is the people that you have. All the time, in our part of the world, in the northern part of Nigeria, we talk about it's the people you have. That is your investment. That is your success. It's the relationships you build that makes you who you are. It is your peace of mind that makes you successful. It is also the people you touch, the people whose knots you are unknotting, the people who you carry along, the people who you impact, the people whose trajectory you touch, the people whose narrative you change. In changing people's narratives, we encounter different peoples in our life's journey. And a lot of the times we tend to think that it's all about us. Success is about being selfless. It's about ensuring that other people are coming along in that place where you think you are going to belong. In belonging to that hierarchy, you must remember that there is still such a long way to go. Success is not about stopping. Previous speakers before me have talked about the trajectory of their lives, the difficulty, the challenges. Let us look at the obstacles a little bit, those knots that we carry around that prevents us from rising. In talking about those knots that prevent us from rising, let us look at the things that you put in your way or that others put in your way or that come in your way as you make your way to that successful place in life. And success is not absolute. Really, honestly, we keep moving. You cannot say, I've reached the zenith of my life. I have arrived where I want to be when you reach a certain point because there's just so much to conquer. In a complex and modern world, we're conquering all the time our fears. We're conquering our education. We're conquering the toxicity in our lives. We're conquering those people who surround us who think that you can never do well. Everybody has those kinds of people. The friends who tell you that you cannot. Those people who stop you and tell you who do you think you are. Those people who stop and tell you that you shouldn't be the one. Those people who stop you and tell you that it should have been them. So, number one, toxicity. Whether it is a family member or it's a friend. Those people who make you feel less than yourself. You should not keep them around you. Because you cannot soar with those people around you. Number two, laziness is not an option. You cannot be lazy and expect to go anywhere. You cannot wake up at noon every day and hope to do things. You have to be up early. It is the reason why the worm wakes up in the morning and crawls out of its hole. You have to be an early bird because that is the only way to succeed. By the time you start at six in the morning, by noon you have your tasks done and you have the rest of the day to yourself. But if you are struggling with time, there's a challenge. In struggling with time, we must look at those things that prevent us from going forward as a nation. We must change the narrative as young people, as citizens, as people of hope. One of those things that holds us back is time. In other parts of the world, people don't go to work at 11 when resumption time is nine. If you are always late and you say it's African time, that's a problem. It's a challenge. I arrive at my meetings 10 minutes before everyone else. 
Let me tell you, you become more powerful when you are known as the person who arrives before everyone else. You are more settled. You are more organized. Your brain is in the right place when you arrive early. But when you are late, you are hurried, you are confused, and you are mixing up your papers. It is so critical to be on time because time waits for no one. You must remember that the other thing that can be a big deal for you in trying to remove the knots and obstacles is stress. If you don't look after yourself, you cannot rise. If you don't look after your health, you cannot rise. You must tell yourself that your health matters, both in body, mind, and spirit. You must be healthy to be able to do the things you want to do and attain that success you are seeking. You must tell yourself that in moving forward, you do not want to be like anyone else. You must have resilience. You must have the power to tell yourself, I can conquer the storms. You must not be brought down by those things that bring other people down. Those things that make them feel the world has come to an end. You must tell yourself that I can conquer this too. If this person can do it, I can do it. As a broadcast journalist, I didn't arrive wanting to be a broadcaster. I arrived wanting to be a writer. I was an editor for many years. One day, somebody failed to come to work. And they said, well, you speak good English. Go and read the news. And I said, well, speaking good English is not enough. I really can't do it. You can do it. I was young. I was vulnerable. And I felt it wasn't possible for me to read the news. But that day, I put my fear in my pocket, and I went into the studio, and the rest, they say, is history. Forty years and counting, over 40 years and counting in the industry and still relevant, means there's something you are doing to undo the knots. Who tells you that people who are in the public space do not have knots? Everybody has knots. That knot that holds you down and tells you you cannot rise. That knot that makes you sick and ties your stomach into small, small chapters. That knot that sits there and settles, as they say, Durum, in your stomach. And all you are thinking about is, I am not going to be able to remove this stone in my stomach. This stone in your stomach can be removed by many things. And I'll tell you the story of my journey to where I am today. Over 40 years and still relevant is not a piece of cake. First, you are told that the only thing you know how to do is read the news. The only thing you know how to do is to be an academic. The only thing you know how to do is to write. I started writing in the Guardian newspapers in the early 80s. And that became the result of my book, In the Blink of an Eye, a collection of 22 years of writing in one book, under one umbrella. Who told you you cannot write a book? You can change your narrative by telling your story in a book. I'm an author of two books. And because from the beginning, I was told that you cannot be a broadcaster and also be an author. Who told you it is not possible? I decided to write my book. Much against a lot of pressure from everybody to say, don't write this book now. Your boss has not written a book. Therefore, why should you write a book? When your boss writes a book, you can follow him and write a book. But every time you have the moment is the moment. That was the time to write the book. And I wrote the book. And it led to the second book, Don't Look at Me Like That. And at the time I wrote the second book, they said, well, you've written the first book, you don't need a second book. Writing a book is like being pregnant. Every time you write one book, you get pregnant for the next book, you get pregnant for the next book. You can change your narrative by telling your story. Let someone else learn from you when you write a book. Write a book about your journey, about your life, about your obstacles, about your challenges so someone else can learn. A knot is really a complicated cordage, an intentional complicated cordage. There are all kinds of knots, the simple underhand knots, the one I brought on stage, or the one that is called a hitch, which you tie to a tree. Campers, sailors, they cannot live without knots. We all know that we use the knot to tie our ties. When you wear a suit, you wear a tie. And that knot is very complex if you don't know how to tie it. That shoelace is very complex if you do not understand it. In fact, knots can put you in fear. Let's talk about the things that you can do to unknot yourself. Resilience. You've heard that word used many times. 
you have to have resilience. Number two, you have to be stress-free. You cannot go through life with too much stress. You know, I like to tell the story of how I love myself. Self-love, not in an arrogant way. Because arrogance is a not. If you're an arrogant person, you will tie yourself to yourself. Nobody else matters. Everybody around you should benefit from whatever you know. So you can be teaching people. As an individual, everybody should be teachable under you, around you. People should learn from you. One of the things I like to do is to go for a massage. I save for it. It releases the, all, the, all the stress in my life. And we have traditional people who do massage, you know, in the north and in the south. We have people who do them. Find somebody to stretch your bones from that tiredness so your success is assured. Number three, get all the knowledge you can. I'm a reader. If you're not a reader, you're wasting your time. Because I can have a conversation about anything. Because I read so much. I read the newspapers. I read the magazines. I read Encyclopedia Britannica. I read biographies. I read autobiographies. I spend my time living in books. So when I'm asked to speak, it's a lot easier. When I'm asked to make a paper and deliver it somewhere, because I have what you call archival knowledge, you can always rise. When you are reading a book, when you are reading a book, you're a better writer. So you must spend your time reading a lot. What are the other things you need to do? You need to banish, banish self-doubt. Tell yourself you can do it. Don't let anyone tell you it's not possible. These things are possible if you tell yourself you can do it. You must tell yourself when you wake up in the morning, do self-affirmation like Jennifer Lopez. Write it on your mirror. My name is so, so, so. I am hoping to do this. I believe I can do it. I believe in myself. Believe in yourself. Don't let anyone tell you you are too short to do it. You are too tall to do it. It's done only by fair people. It's done only by dark people. It's done only by southerners. It's done only by not. These things are untrue. We all know that they are untrue. What are the kind of things you tell yourself when you are achieving? When you are moving forward? You put goals. You put steps. You don't tell yourself that this book, I want to write it in 2065. You tell yourself, I want to write it at the end of 2023. If it gets to the first quarter of 2024, we thank God. But you've set a goal. You are moving by that goal. You have to look after your health, like I said at the beginning. Because if you are not healthy, then you are wasting your time. Who told you that when you retire is the end of life? Remove that knot. I retired seven years ago from NTA as an executive director. I've never been busier. I'm busier than when I was at work. Why? Because you must set that table aright when you are at work. You must give yourself time to go to courses when you are at work. When you are on leave, go to all the courses you can find. Get crash the ones you don't have to pay for. Show up. Don't just lie down. Show up. When they invite you to things, don't say, eh, actually, that thing is not for me. We're learning every day. Show up in places you are not expected to show up. Get education in other areas, expand your mind. I have a certificate in educational psychology. People are in shock. So I counsel people. Who told you you can't take a certificate in something else? Enjoy what you do. Don't be trapped in something you don't enjoy. Learn about it even if it is not something you planned for. If you are into cybersecurity, get the best degree in cybersecurity. Get the best education in cybersecurity. If you are into broadcasting, fan out. Don't tell yourself that the only thing you can do is to be in the radio or to be in the television. And that is all. If you are on television, it's over. Everybody knows you. It's enough. I consult for international organizations. I'm writing my third book. I've written two books. I'm busy. I'm teaching. I'm bringing up young people. I have a boot camp for young children. You can be all you want to be if you remove the knots in your life. And in removing the knots in your life, you can soar. One after the other, you must untie those knots. One by one. One at a time. You undo them one at a time. Let me assure you, 
that as you continue to rise in the trajectory of your life, one of the greatest gifts of untying the knot is charity and kindness. Visit a motherless baby's home. Change the life of a child. Adopt a child by proxy. Wake up in the morning and ask yourself, who can you make happy today? Believe me, the knots will begin to unfurl. They begin to loosen. They begin to change. Your stomach becomes lighter because you helped somebody today. Charity. How many of your neighbors, how many of the people around you cannot feed? How many of your cousins have you decided you are now a big man, a big woman, you cannot look at them? Those are the things that remove the knots in your life. Finally, you must have faith. You must believe in something higher than you. You must believe in something higher than you. And you must be dedicated and loyal to what you have chosen to believe in, what you have chosen to worship. You must be close to a supreme being that would help you to deal with your knots. One by one, we begin to unknot the knots in our life. One after the other, we begin to tell ourselves it is possible. There is absolutely nothing that is not possible. A few of the knots will remain. Some of them will be there. It's called life. If you don't have them, then really, honestly, you haven't lived. Those knots will be there. But the lesser they are, the higher you go. Remove the knots in your life by helping someone today. Remove the knots in your life by expanding your horizon and learning something new. Remove the knots in your life by staying healthy. Remove the knots in your life by acquiring knowledge, building relationship, being together with family. Everywhere else in the world is not like Nigeria. Nigeria is a community. And the fact that I can visit you and eat Obergwa and eat Tuwo and eat Amala and Begiri in your house means that we live in a country that still recognizes community. Community can unfurl our knots. Let's remove our knots one after the other. May we hear you roar. May we hear you soar. Coming after. The next time I see you, you are heading to the top by the grace of God. Thank you.